this morning. Certainly reaction coming from the weekend. John Steenhuizen is now officially the leader of the Democratic Alliance after being voted in during the party's first ever virtual Congress over the weekend. He beat his rival Mbalintuli with 80% of the vote in a victory that will now see him lead the party through the 2021 local government elections and the general election in 2024. But will he succeed in winning South Africa's biggest opposition party, a, biggest, a bigger slice, pardon me, of the national vote come election time? Get to get you some analysis now. We're joined by political science lecturer, that's Professor Dirk Kotze from the University of South Africa. Prof, thanks again. Welcome to the, to the AM report. Thanks for coming on and chatting to us. Probably the worst surprise of the weekend, this win by John Steenhuizen. Uh, the question now is, how does he bring he, who, someone who was his contender uh, in this election, in this elective Congress, how does he bring someone like Mbali Ntuli closer to the leadership of the DA? Yes, I think it's very important that he does that. Uh, yesterday he already started to reach out, she reached out to him also. But I think it's very important that there is sort of visible signs that there is no factions developed around the two of them, but that it's afterwards that they can come back together um, as a more unified uh, party. So it is absolutely essential that the, she's not left in the cold um, and that she's not seen as simply an opposition and it was a winner-loser situation. So in that sense, I think uh, in the next few weeks, uh, you will have to take some steps in order to bring her closer in terms of ne not necessarily in a formal position in, in the, as one of the leadership uh, positions, because that's elected position. But in terms of involving her in decision making and in providing the, the guidance within the party, mm -hmm. I was going to do that in something else, which I, I don't have to prescribe to him or suggest. But in principle, that is, I think, what, is, what I would expect coming to do. Yeah, yeah. And Prof, you talk about, uh, you know, factions not now emerging uh, as a consequence of what happened over the weekend. Factionalism itself is a challenge in the DA, as we've seen, uh, you know, things have unfolded over the past months and years in the party. John Steenhuizen, in his speech after his election yesterday, saying that the DA will no longer turn its back on its core principles. What do you think he meant by that? Well, he listed the principles there. I think what he wants to do, and it is very clear from uh, some of the motions that were adopted, very much his, his pronouncement also is to say there must be more coherence within the party. Uh, in the past, there was lots of debates and fragmentation actually in the party because of social uh, media debates, because of pronouncements made there. One of the motions is specifically aimed at the social media and saying, you know, well, party members, if they have problems, they must use the internal processes of the party, not go outside the social media in order to score points against others. Mm. So I think what he wants to do is to, to bring, bring back the, the processes into the party, to introduce more discipline within the party, and to say focus on the party when we have to deal with issues and make it an internal party debate instead of open debate um, in which any person can become involved in. So his approach is to, to tighten the, the control over or the internal processes within the DA, which is slightly different from that of, of Zumbali and Tuli, who was more talking about that the party must become inclusive. Mm. So there are different emphases that they had on how the party must move forward. Uh, Professor Kotza, as we continue to reflect on you know, where the DA is coming from historically, particularly over the past, say, say 18 months of, of the party's life, you know, with uh, Musi Maimane, uh, the ousting of what was touted as black leaders being targeted in the party. H how does, how does uh, John Steenhuizen deal with that perception now that the DA does treat its black leaders in a particular ne uh, negative way and also at the same time, while dealing with that perception, attract a new voter base? Yes, I think that, that will be one of his main challenges, is, is how to, because of his own position, of how to make sure that the diversity, and he emphasized that very much, the diverse composition of the, the leadership of the DA um, 
how that is visible in public. Now, I think one of the failures of the DA was is that they didn't showcase their leadership well enough. For example, at provincial level, eight of the nine members are, bl are black, uh, eight of the nine provincial leaders are black persons, but we, you seldom see them. Now, you, you see um, uh, Kunzili von Damme, you see Soli Malazzi, they are some of the main spokespersons of the DA, but otherwise you don't necessarily see them. So there has to be a new strategy also, a communication strategy, a way in which the, the party is branded, in, in which they will have to emphasize this, this idea, this assumption that they are making, that they are the most diverse, the most inclusive party um, of the main, main, the three main parties. But at the same time, I think we will have to have a more of a collective decision-making leadership style. Now, in the past, it was sometimes very much just as one leader who's seen almost as a one-man or one-woman show. Um, well, then the very nature of the DA is actually that of a more federal collective type of part. If you look at what happened at the past Congress now, they've elected three, actually a troika of leadership, him as the federal leader, Ivan Meyer as the federal chairperson, and Alan Zeller as the chairperson of the federal council. So the very, the composition of the party is actually emphasizing that there must be cooperation and not one single leader that dominates everything. Well, well, since you're on that topic, uh, Prof, there is a lot of chatter now about Helen Ziller's influence over the actual leadership of the party. What is your take on that issue? I think, first of all, what is uh, quite interesting is that uh, the margin of majority that she received in this election is uh, quite less than that of, uh, of John Steenhuisen in comparison with um, he, his majority is around about 80%, this is much less. So there's an indication that she is not so in a strong position as what he is, for example. At the same time, I think I can foresee the situation that the more he establishes himself as um, <clears throat> the leader of the DA, the less relevant Alan Zeller will become. Because she came in initially as the person who was seen to stabilize the DA after all the resignations. But the more he is there and he has enough uh, political experience in order to be able to do it himself without her support, yeah. um, the less I think he is a person that many people Her position as the third council is in any case more of a background type of job. Yeah. That's how it works. But then self uh, found that too. So the way in which the position has been uh, designed for. So I, I, my, my prediction is over time there for her influence in the DA will actually be in line. Well, I suppose uh, also just in terms of uh, you know, how successful uh, the DA is, that is something that we can gauge come election time, uh, of course, local government elections next year and the national poll in 2024. Prof, thanks very much for your time this morning on the AM report. Professor Dirk Kotzer is a political science lecturer at UNISA joining us this morning as we continue to reflect on the DA's elective uh, conference that took place just over the weekend.